William Roach has been the ever-present face on Coronation Street since the soap opera first aired over 50 years ago, 1960. But he has found himself in the headlines this week after controversial comments made to TVNZ's Sunday programme. Here's what he had to say in response to the media coverage. I apologise for any offence that's been caused by any comments that I've made. But I would never say that victims of sexual offences are responsible for the abuse that they've suffered. And I apologise most profusely if I've been misunderstood in this way. I mean, my, my intention in the article was not to cause any distress. And I offer my utmost sympathies to anyone who's been affected by sexual offences or paedophilia. Well, William Roach is in New Zealand now to narrate the onstage Coro comedy. He joins us now. William, thank you very much for coming in this morning. Lovely to see you here in New Zealand. It's lovely to be here, I must say. I do want to start by asking you, I mean, few would, if anyone would, would question the sincerity of your apology there. You seem genuinely sorry for the upset. But do you understand how people took offence, how this potentially hurt people? Well, the trouble is, that in spiritual matters, they're quite complex, and you can say something. If somebody understands what you're saying and puts it in their own words, that's fine. If somebody doesn't understand what you're saying and puts it in their own words, it's a distortion, and that is what has happened. I'm not blaming anyone, I don't try to justify, but I would never say that. There is no punishment, there is none. Um, but so you uh, genuinely, uh, dismiss any ideas that you sanction uh, any sort of sexual relations with somebody underage? Oh, that? Oh, you're talking about that side of it? I, of course I don't sanction that. All I'm trying to do is get a balance right. If paedophiles should be routed out, any, anyone who offends sexually should be dealt with if properly in, 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 in the way the law deals with that sort of thing. But what's happened in the UK, there's been a pendulum swing after the Jimmy Savile situation. And uh, all, I'm, all I was saying was that if you are accused, you're supposed to be innocent to prove them guilty, but you get to, if a celebrity, you get pilloried. I was just saying, and I think some lawyers have said this, that there should be anonymity for both the accuser and the accusee until such time as there is evidence, and then it should come out. And, uh, I, and, and they must be routed out, absolutely. And the timing of this was just before you left to come over to New Zealand. Has this overshadowed your arrival? No, well, it, it's a thing that <clears throat> it got out of all proportion, and particularly having to apologise for something you haven't said or don't believe. But, um, yes, it did, and it, it's quite upsetting uh, when that happens. And I don't want to upset anybody. I mean, my thing is, we're, we're, we're in a little group, we talk about love, and that is all, love. And love is totally forgiving, we're all totally and absolutely forgiving. And so, when we're in this mode, and this is all we're talking about, to have these awful, harsh accusations is, is upsetting. But, I don't want to go into justification, I've done a little more than I meant to this morning. I, I'm trying to just keep it quiet, because if you try and justify, the other side will come back. So yes, it was upsetting, but it's over and done with. We put it behind us. I'm in New Zealand, which is a very beautiful place, I must say. I walked around Auckland last night and loved it. And we've got a, a really good play that we're doing. Well, um, will you tell us about the play and um, we'll be going it to it this week. And what is your role for a start? Well, the, first of all, the play was um, brought about because of our 50th anniversary, which I think you've seen now, the tram crash and all that. So uh, one of the writers, Jonathan Harvey, was asked to put together all the major storylines from the very beginning, 1960, right up to date. Um, you've got... I think about 70 characters are portrayed on stage and you've got three actresses and three actors. They are absolutely brilliant playing all these parts and you always know who is who. These of course have to be linked and the job of linking is mine. I am the narrator but of course there's a the young chap playing me as well. So you narrate as William Roach, but you also then interact with the play as Ken Barlow. Well, uh, there's a guy playing Ken Barlow uh, in it, so it's a bit, <laughs> bit confusing here. I am a narrator who at certain times takes on a role of a vicar and, and, and a policeman and things like that to interact a little bit. And I do have a little bit of interaction with a guy playing Ken, obviously, which is quite, quite a funny. So reality gets stretched a little, and you can get a little lost. But no, you won't get lost in the play. You'll know what everything is. It's very enjoyable. It's very good. So for Coronation Street fans that might say, oh, well, was Ken Barlow the only character? How will it be like Coronation Street? Um, does it come across all the same themes and the characters? It's all the characters are there. You go back from Ina, Minnie, and Elsie, and, and uh, all those characters in the early days, Len Fairclough. You go 
right through every major... If you're a Cory fan, you're far too young to remember the early days. Not uh, the early, but, early days, yeah, but I yeah, do yeah, watch. But, <laughs> but from the days that you can remember, every major story is there, is, is acted out, and you know who is who. And all I do as a narrator is link it. Okay. William, I want to ask you, because this, this uh, cross-generation appeal of Cory, you talk about the very early storylines, but it hasn't mattered that, Tony, you missed it. And Nadine, you're a big Coro fan as well. And I remember last year when we spoke to William on the phone, uh, this is something which you were, you were sort of slightly starstruck at the fact you were talking <laughs> to... Um, it is an amazing thing, this appeal through all generations of Coro. Well, yes, yeah, yeah, sorry, do you want to say? No, I was just going to say, um, I guess you've been on the show for about twice as long as I've been alive, and yet it's probably my favourite TV show. <laughs> I just wanted to know, you know, I'm from the so-called restless generation that jumps from job to job. Um, yeah. Did you ever consider leaving Coro at any point over those 50 Well, no, I, I don't. I love it. I mean, I've given my life to it, and, and I actually adore it. I miss, I'm so lucky. Um, as an actor, I'm lucky to have had regular employment, but I'm so lucky that it's been in something as beautiful and lovely as Coronation Street, which, you know, it's funny to say it's a very moral show where you get all these murders, rapes, all this, but why it's moral is at the end of the day, they usually get their comeuppance. But what it's about, it's just about ordinary people struggling against adversity. It's beautifully written. They get strong characters. This is why it was called Dickensian in the early days. John Betchman, the poet laureate, called it Dickensian. Um, and so long as the characters are... They don't have to be loved. You can actually hate a character and enjoy to watch it getting its come up. But as long as the characters are full and rich and enjoyed and the writing is good and the writers are brilliant, I don't know how they keep it up. I, even now, when I get the scripts, I look at it, I either fall about laughing or I think, wow, yeah. you know, this is really good stuff. What's your relationship like with Deirdre off screen? <laughs> what, what, are you friends with Anne? I mean, do you Deirdre, go around to her house for dinner? Or? I couldn't have had a better on-screen wife than Deirdre. She's what you would call a mother hen. She's always going around cleaning. She comes in with a marigold and she'll clean. Um, she's got one of these big handbags, and I, I joke about it, that she's got everything in there. If I I said I wanted a cucumber sandwich, I'm sure she'd pull out a cucumber, <laughs> a loaf of bread bun, she'd make one. It's, if you've got a headache, she's got pills for you. She looks after everybody. She's just a very, a very beautiful person. Have you ever had a fight in all those years, the a two fight? of you? A fight? Oh, you mean off screen? Off screen? Never. Never? Never once. Wow. We've had many... On, on screen. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, often in the middle of a fight, really going like that, there's a little bit of you that's the actor say, hey, this is really good, isn't it? And at the end, you can say, I enjoyed that, didn't you? He said, yes, so did I. <laughs> no, I have never... I don't think I've ever had a crossword with Anne in wow. the 35 years of being there. Uh, given you've been Ken Barlow for so long, do you feel that sometimes, and I know we've been guilty of it this morning, saying, um, Ken Roach, no, Bill Barlow, oh, yeah. <laughs> do you find people actually confuse you with the character <laughs> you listen, play? I'll tell you about the names, and this is absolutely true. Uh, this, the street had been running for about three years, and I was sitting with my father, and we watched an episode, and, and the commercial break came up. He said, oh, Ken, uh, sorry, Bill. I thought, right, if my own father could do it. It's getting but we, serious. We have a similar problem. I want to call Deirdre Ann, you know, and I'm terrible at names anyway. So I just treat Ken as a nickname. And if people say Ken, I will respond to that. I don't say, my name is William Rowe. No, no, it's very understandable. If they've seen me for years as Ken, that is what it's going to be. And the intention is they will continue to see you for years because you've said you're going to have to carry me off the street. <laughs> so just one yeah. last question before we go. Yeah. I think when people um, watch you today and we've seen the documentaries you've been in, 81, they cannot believe that you were 81. <laughs> what, is, yeah. what is your secret? Because you do look a hell of a lot younger. Well, you're very, very kind. I, I, I say bad living is good for you, is all I can say, because I don't, I don't exercise, I, I don't eat too well. Um, but uh, I think it's the genes initially. My mother, at 95, was really active and strong. And as long as you don't abuse those too much. But also, I believe, if you've got a feeling of inner peace, I honestly think this is crucial. If you've got that inner peace, and I have, um, it just makes such a big difference. Well, William Roche, thank you so much for joining us. All yep. three of us enjoyed that. Well, you've been absolutely lovely. And I'm, I must say how much I think it's a beautiful country with beautiful people. I'm absolutely knocked out by it. Well, I do hope you enjoy your stay here. And we, of course, will enjoy the stage show Thursday night, I think it opens. It opens Thursday Fantastic. night. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yes, it All the best. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll see it through, given your experience. Thank you very much, William Thank you. Roach. Thank you.